Hey, this is the Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 412. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan today. The worm shall turn. Now hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? We're back. Good. What is going down? Whole bunch is going down. It's our second recording of 2024. The first one of the winter with snow. We actually got snow yesterday. Which is horrific. And there were several accidents. We're not going to talk about any of those on the show because it's just people that are bad at driving. What we are going to talk about, however, is a super cool deck sent in by a longtime friend of the show. Some new friends of the show. We're going to tell some stories, some thanks some peoples. That made perfect sense. Before yep. we get to any of that stuff, we have to thank our official business daddies, FusionGamingOnline.com, the source for all your gaming needs, and Pile of Bones Brewing Co., they're the second coolest thing to come out of Regina, and the official beer sponsor of CCO Sidewalk Slam Season 2, which you can check out on YouTube right now. Oh, man. <sighs> Big thanks to Pile of Bones Brewing Co. We drank them when we were recording CCO Sidewalk Slam Season 2, Episode 1. It has some funny moments. It's out. If you like, and I'm, I'm going to let it out of the bag. If you like squirrel decks like Chatterfang, you're going to like this one. If you hate Chatterfang <clears throat> because your friends play squirrels and you hate okay. the memes and everything, you're also going to like this one because we beat up on the squirrel player. We do. So you can um, have your cake and eat it too. Yes, while you watch the squirrel player eat it. Yes, and if you like, yes, while you watch the squirrel player actually eat your cake. And if you like to watch me get beat up by Uncle Brando, also watch this season of Sidewalk Slam <laughs> because that's a theme. <laughs> We've got a few ep episodes in the bank, and uh, your good friend Ryan, his uh, his win loss record not so good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying hard for you. I'm trying hard, everybody. For yeah. you, I'm doing this for you. Looking probably. like the Carolina Panthers out there, worst <laughs> team in the league. <laughs> Does that make me the? Cleveland Browns. Hey, Browns are good. They're going to make the playoffs, man. Th that's that's why I'm yeah, saying that. Yeah, Uncle it's... Brando's trending to make the playoffs for Sidewalk Slam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So watch it. Lots of fun. If you want to pick up the cards that we play on Sidewalk Slam, like Thick Daddy Sauron, that was my commander. Or Bird. Uh, um, Othari Sun's Champion. Glory. Glory. Othari Sun's Glory. If you want to pick those cards up, you go to FusionGamingOnline.com. Use CCO Summer promo code. Man, it's winter. Or talk to them. Ah, uh, you know, I'm just gonna keep the ship on the course. I want CCO suck it. CCO S my D. No, that's too long. Yes, and harder to say. Yes, yeah, CCO summer is the current one. Yes, and if you're a first timer, like if you're new to the nation, welcome. You can use CCO perks when you spend over a hundred bucks. Canadian. Yes, that's like four dollars American. Yeah, and then you get store credit kickbacked onto your account to the tune of ten percent. Then you can save more money when you buy more things. Yeah, very much so. Very important to save money because everything's expensive. Unless you go to Fusion and get your magic cards, gaming supplies, play mats, sleeves, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh. I bought my nephew uh, Pokemon cards for Christmas from Fusion. That's fun. Yeah. He I've them. never paid money for a Pokemon card in my life. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, Pokemon was, um, you were already a man. I was already a man. <laughs> yeah. Uncle Brian, hey, born... Um, 1870. Yep. 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 <clears throat> I'm already dust, as I like to say. Yes. I just refuse to diffuse into the wind. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of lots of hot and sticky magic, sweaty nerd grease hold them together. Yeah. Hey, man. Hot and sweaty, sticky nerd grease. I was watching a movie last night, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm watching a movie, and it was fine, right? And then I gets up, and I go to brush my teeth before bed. Yep. I had blood all over my face. Whoa. My, my like, eyeball was bleeding. I had like blood coming, like not my eyeball, but like right underneath my eyelid here. Why? There's like this, I don't know. There's just this like little little cut and then bled all over my face. Oh. And did, I thought, you, did you blade yourself in secret just to like make yourself like just, look tough? Just to remember how what it was like? No, <laughs> no, just, <laughs> oh, it just wow. kind of happened. It was real weird. Very strange. And like, but I looked pretty hardcore though because I had like blood all over or, my face. Or right? was it like that horror movie moment when your face just starts bleeding and you don't know why and it's because uh, like you're yeah. possessed or something? Maybe you got a demon inside you. It could be. Yeah. I'm taking up residence and he's just like, you know what? I'm not going to F with this guy. He screwed it up. Yeah. Because life already sucks. I'm oh, just going to yeah. live in here. Oh, yeah. I just wallow in the misery Oh, with and him. if you got possessed or like if a demon was inside you, they'd be like, this guy's got creaky old joints and a bad <laughs> back. And I can't make his head spin all the way around. Yeah, it don't go sore that far. neck. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, Screw this. Oh, yeah. Well, that's uh, getting old, eh? Yeah. That's what's sucks. getting old's about. Yeah. Anyways, speaking of getting old, nah. we are old enough to have today's deck submitter uh-huh. be a longtime CCO nationalite. We're going to get to him in a minute. Okay. But first, we got to thank the new CCO nationalites. Okay. Ooh. We've got a returner. Okay. We've got returning to our um, Patreon support team. Can, is that... That's not a very fun way to say that. Yeah, it but sounds terrible, but they're they're back. They're back. And we appreciate Patreon. it. Patreon.com slash CCO podcast. The two best benefits. Benefit yeah, one yeah. is getting your CCO nickname. Yeah, of course. Benefit, yeah. Yeah. benefit two. Actually, there's three main benefits. Oh. Benefit two is the CCO Discord, mm-hmm. where you could submit decks and chat with all of the best members of the nation. That's an actual benefit. Yes. Highly recommended Often is it, maybe once a month, I get told that CCO Nation and our Discord and our community is the best one in magic. It's because it's true. Not just personally to myself, but sometimes it happens publicly, like on Twitter, or somebody will like make a Facebook post. Hey, like check out Commander Cuckoo. They're actually like the best guys in magic. There you go. There you go. See? Yeah, that's benefit number two. See? Benefit number three. Oh. An invite to CCO Experience. Ah, uh, yes. Ac- Chicago is the next actual one. Actual benefit. That's pretty good to see the shit fountain. Um, Probably. Chicago in February. I'm not so sure that that's a benefit. No, it's going to be great. But it is going to be great. We've got drivers lined up. We've got budget for um, there. checking out where our Airbnb is. Uh-huh. It's pseudo within walking distance, weather permitting in February. Uh-huh. Um, there's it, it looks like a trendy kind of hipster area. So Ooh. there's like pubs and bars and, and restaurants and stuff like within a block of where we are. So maybe we'll do that for a supper one night or or all the nights. Yeah. But there is some budget for one of our CCO executive chefs, all filler, no killer Miller, Aiden, mm-hmm. uh, to cook us a supper. Well, that's and, fun. and him and I have been talking a little bit about that. Um, but if we don't, maybe the budget just goes to filling the fridge entirely with beer. Yeah. Which is also par for the course at the CCO experience. Correct. Because last time I checked, your boys like to drink beer. Yes. For breakfast. And lunch and dinner. Correct. And bedtime snack. Yes. 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 Second breakfast. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Elevensies. Also, yes. Are there any more Hobbit meals that I'm missing? Probably. Uh, There's six meals a day. There's two suppers. Two suppers, lunch. Breakfast. Breakfast. Second breakfast. Second breakfast and 11 well, We did it. There you Look go. Look at that. We're good. Yep. Man, we're smart. Yeah. How do they, why don't they grow up? Why don't they only grow out? I don't know. If they eat so much, you think that they would eventually grow up. I don't know. Why don't your, why doesn't your body turn into dust? Because it's old. Same physics. Force of will. Yeah. Yep. Force of will. Anyways, we got new patrons to thank. Ah, uh, yes. Returning one, Israel Garcia. He's back. I like that guy. Yes. Um. I think. Pr- Probably. Uh, probably a cam girl name, Garcia. He's is, is, maybe it, he's Colombian. He's got a big booty. Is he the real Garcia kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. That's one. We've got a new one, okay. and and both of our new ones, potential celebrity relations. Probably not though. Now nah, they might be, but. That's the thing, though. Like, we've got so many celebrity relations in the nation. Like, lots of famous people. Potentially. Yeah, that's true. That's potentially. True. They play baseball. Yeah. Or they are wrestlers or famous actors. This cool. one um, could be brother or relation of uh, Miranda Lambert, famous country singer. This is Nick Lambert. What? I've never heard of this Miranda person before. Pseudo celebrities. What's his name? Nick. Nick? Nick Lambert. Banjo. Um, Nick. Uh, we got to make like a country music joke, don't we? Dude, well, I don't know. Is Miranda uh, Lambert even a celebrity? Down in the comments if you know who that is. No cheating. Uh, I don't. Nick Lambert. Um, Dick Lamhurt. Yes. <laughs> interpret that. That is a country music reference yeah, for sure. because it's the way you want. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Man, you know the thing about deliverance? Like, everybody thinks that, like, the dueling banjos thing is the creepy thing, and yep. the I'm gonna make you squeal like a pig boy is super funny until they see the movie, and then it's not. I don't du- know what the movie is. Dueling ba- Deliverance. Oh. Dueling banjos is actually really cool. There's, like, this great, like, country music scene, they're, like, playing this thing. That sounds and- like something that we'll get canceled if we talk about. <laughs> no, it's, it's a movie. It's everybody knows this movie, and the squeal like a yeah. pig boy thing is, like... Yeah. Imagine a hillbilly coming across Burt Reynolds in the woods 
in the 70s. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything other than that, and it's exactly what you think it is. Who's the next patron, Ryan? Next one. Devin Nylander. Pseudo-celebrity William Nylander for the Tor- Toronto Maple Leafs. Potential brother, potentially. Never, never, never heard of him. He's good. Maple sure. Leafs are good this year. What about, what's his name? William. William? Nope. De- William Nylander is the hockey player. Ah, yes. <laughs> this is his uh, less good, shitty, magic-playing brother. Okay. Devin. <laughs> Devin. <laughs> Devin. One guy plays in the NHL. One guy plays Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Which one costs more money? Uh, well, considering that William Nylander probably makes more than seven figures annually. No, nah, what you make means nothing. But it offsets it the cost. No, nah, it doesn't. It still costs the same. If you make $3 million to do something and it still costs you $500 to do it, yes, you're up money, but the, you've still paid $5,000. Yeah, but the, but the point is, is you're up money. Yeah, but the cost is still a thing. Devin Nylander. Evan. Devin. Evan. How about, how about Nyland? I bet you it's Nylander, which sounds like Highlander. What if it's Nylander? There can be only one. Neil Hander. Neil Hander. <laughs> Neil Hander. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> yes, if you if you have to ask, you can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> Devin Handy. Yep. <laughs> Got there. He's a handyman. Yeah. He's I a handyman. Why do I? Why would I want to become a handyman? Just going around giving anybody handies? <laughs> <laughs> that's a Trailer Park Boys joke right there. Yeah. Man, okay. Sure Devin Handy. Cool. Welcome. Welcome aboard. And F you for being oh, here. Oh, very much All so. of you. He, got fi- he joined like in the evening. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, when you go into the Discord, you get finger blasted. Like everybody in there gives you mig- middle finger memes. Yeah. And he joined in the evening oh, and, and just work. got blasted. <laughs> Every orifice was stuffed with fingers. Yeah. F you, buddy. Yeah. CCO Nation, baby. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. it. Okay. So the final big thanks we got. Uh, no, bef- just before that. Um, coming up. Probably just before this one launched is the first of Hot Brews. The uh, the hell is that? Hot Brews on CCO Media Group. How do I want to say it? Hot Brews on CCO Media Group by CCO John. I'm calling him that. CCO Brando, CCO Ryan, CCO John. Doing the CEDH coverage. It's good. He interviews another creator called Cobblepot, and he's doing Teamer CEDH, that color identity, all month. So if you want to learn lessons from CEDH, watch it on Commander Cookout. You're He's gonna talking learn... to the penguin? Yes. You're going to learn all about CEDH all month, this month, Teamer. Watch it. I'll link it up here. I'll link it down in the show notes. Freaking watch it. The last thank you. Today's deck list submitter. Okay. CCO Nationalite for over two years. Sorry. CCO National Light since episode 10. So that's like four years. Ah, uh, like six. Six years, Jesus. Patron for over two years. This, one of our first ever nicknames. Ooh. Yeah, this is Alex Ortiz. Pseudo-celebrity David Ortiz's brother, maybe. Okay. Played for the uh, bunch of baseball teams. Big Pappy, right? That's what I thought his nickname was, Little Pappy. Then he goes, no, my original nickname... Alex, cam girl tease or tease. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that sounds yeah, that sounds like something we'd say. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who do we got? Barrel worm speaker. <laughs> what? Yeah, barrel worm speaker. That's why we're getting our worms twisted. That's that is exactly that's why the worm is turning because it will be our turn oh. and then we will make the worm. Oh yeah, I was thinking something else. Yeah, no, yeah. I was thinking no, about no um, king shaming in the nation. William Handy again. <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh but but here we are. He's a three three human druid for green green two. Worms you control get plus two plus two and have trample. <coughs> Jesus. Yeah. And you can pay green and seven and tap him to make a four four worm. This ability costs X less to activate where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So it's a worm deck. It's a worm deck. Now Worms we control get plus two, plus two, and we make a four, four. So it would be a six, six. Yes. For, a six, six for eight, but once we have one, it would make another six, six for like two. two. And if we've got something that's seven or bigger, make a, make a six, six for one. Yeah. That's pretty good. 
Yeah. That's pretty good. You got to have big mana though, right? N- no, because it only costs one. Well, but for the first one or to make your first big worm. Oh, yeah. So well, let's... Wait a minute. Wait. Oh, among worms. I was like, among other creatures. You, no, it's among worms you control. Because I was like, wait a minute. He's three. So this automatically... Yes, yeah. Among, among wormies. Among big, slimy, one-eyed worms. I think we're going to play any of those? No. We are not playing Uncle Brando's favorite card. Favorite 12 drop. We are not. Is it 12? Eh, 14? 12, 12 or 15. I A don't talk-thon know. worm. That card sucks. We're also... People don't still play that, do they? Oh, yeah. They probably don't, hey? Probably do. No. Yeah? No. We're also not playing Uncle Brando's other favorite card, Draco. Right. But I do have a challenge for the nation that I will work up to and give at the end of the deck tech. Okay. Challenge for the nation at the end of the episode. Let's flip over to cards. Let's find out how we're going to make ramp in the deck. Okay. So you wanted to make magics to play worms. Yes. Okay. Magics, magics in this case... Ramp. Now our our deck list has three ramp sections. Oh. Yes. <laughs> You're gonna need lots of mana. We need to lots play of big one eyed worms. Now you've said ramp. We yes. will start there. I'm gonna read all of them. Sure. Then we can go back and hit the ones that you think need hitting. Do it. All right, we have Traverse the Outlands, Tempt of Discovery, Sylvan Scrying, Sky Shroud, Claim, Seedborn Muse, Ranger's Path, Nisa's Pilgrimage, Migration Path, Godama's Reach, Explosive Vegetation, and Cultivate. Oh, those are all three, four, or five drop ramp spells that search for more than one land. Yeah. I think that's the point, right? With the exception of Seedborn Muse, which untaps your land at the beginning of each player's turn yes like okay traverse the outlands five drop search your library for basic land equal to greatest power among creatures you control right oh, that's a good one yeah Yeah, right so you could potentially search for six and then you got like nisa's pilgrimage migration's path explosive veg those all search for two cultivate kadama's reach search for two but one goes to your hand yep. right so the mana cost of these spells is at a higher altitude it's not one drop two drop mana rocks we're not playing like, rampant growth yeah, and we're not playing like um, um, liquid metal torque and other two drop mana rocks like yeah. signets and stuff. The one two drop we are playing, Sylvan Scrying, finds any land. Yes, and we do have lands that in this deck make lots of mana. Yeah, this one finds Nyx, Nyx, um, Nykthos, Nykthos Shrine to Nyx or whatever. Yes, that's yes. what that that's what that finds. And we're also playing Tempt of Discovery, which I don't really like. But it does search for any land and potentially multiples. It does, but it also helps your opponents. And often what that'll do <laughs> is oh, you're going to get yeah. your lands and they're all going to get a wasteland and just yes. kill your land. That, that yeah. you uh-huh. What I like better than that, it costs one more and I can't remember the name oh, I'm no. blanking on it right what now. What I like better than them finding wasteland is me saying, I'm going to find wasteland. And then they find like a basic. So I can't wasteland them, but actually they put their basic down first and I just plop down my Nyklos anyways. <laughs> <laughs> now what you put down is wasteland, strip mine, and ghost quarter. Ooh. If if all of your opponents and, search. And Nyklos. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I like the, there's one from Amonkhet that lets you find two lands and there's some, they come into play untapped if you have a oh, desert or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's a good one too. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's yeah. a solid card, does the thing, Anyways, whatever. We, so now we also have, let's go to Mana Doublers next, and then we'll sure. talk about rocks, because sure. the rocks are hella rocks. Mana Doublers, we have Caged Sun, Nyx Bloom Ancient, Selvala Heart of the Wilds, which we should probably talk about, and Zendikar Resurgent, which is also worth a look, because it draws cards when you play creatures, and gives you an additional mana each time you yeah. tap a basic for mana. Uh, let me uh, let me summarize. Yes. Zendikar Resurgent, Mana Doubler, play a creature, draw a card. Nyx Bloom Ancient, Mana Tripler. Caged Sun, all your guys can get big, Mana Doubler. Mm-hmm. Selvala, Heart of the Wild, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card if its power is the greatest among power of creature you control. No, it's not you control. That, oh, that oh, works for everybody. Whenever big, biggest, a creature yes. comes into play, if it's the biggest creature, whoever played the creature draws a card. Uh, chances are, it us. You know what? Somebody played a Silvala on me once. I drew three cards off of that thing. Nice. It was awesome. Nice. You're going to have to check out Sidewalk Slam episode two of season uh-huh. two to see a Silvala. Ooh. It's, uh, it's not the commander of the deck, but it does make a, an, an appearance. Solid. Salvalid. <laughs> <laughs> also, green tap, 
add X mana of any combination of color where X is the greatest power among creature you control. Man, I'm glad she got a reprint, hey? Yeah. Oh, she's an accessible card now. Yeah. Sort of. Still 11 bucks. We're going to talk about that in the budgie section. Yeah. Also, Nick's Blue Mansion, I know it's here because it's also a big dude, but there is an enchantment that does the same thing. Yeah. Less ver- easy to kill for your mana investment. And it's got an adventure on it, right? Adventure, uh, search for a land, and then it it's a yeah. mana tripler. Uh, virtue of strength? I believe virtue so. Virtue of vitality? One of the two. Yeah, it's the green one. Uh, it'll be on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. Which you should be. Yes. But... I think in this particular situation, we already have a ton of big giant dudes. I think that a harder to kill mana tripler might be a idea or an upgrade we could make. Also, I believe the virtue costs less than the $24 of an explanation. It does. I can confirm this. Yes. Excellent. Yes. And our last three make mana spells. Oh, no, never mind. We have four more after this. Oh, Jesus. There's cost reducers also. Yes. The rocks are. Patriarch's Seal, which we'll talk about in a second. What? Sol Ring and the Fairest. The most balanced, the absolute most medium magic card in history. Brash Taunter? Great Henge. Oh. Great Henge is not handsome. Oh, yes. Or powerful. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Because it's totally balanced. You know what? Sidewalk Slam Season 2, Episode 2. You should watch that if you like the Great Henge, too. <laughs> Same guy. <laughs> Same guy played that. I tried to kill him. Did it work? No. No. No, he no. he 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 got me. What a guy. Well, you we're not gonna talk about no. that. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> yes. So uh, everybody knows Sol Ring. Patriot Seals is a three drop mana rock, taps for one man of any color, or you can tap one and it to untap a legendary creature we control. So that could be oh. our commander to make more worms. Yes. Or it could be our Silvala to make more mana. Man, I like that card. That's hey? a good one. That's that, a good one if your commandy's got leggy leggy activate ability. Yes. That's a good one. Yes. Yeah. And then the Great Henge does everything in the world. If we read it to you, you wouldn't believe us. So we're going to move on to the cost reducers. Man, I still don't even know what that card does. <laughs> everything. So the cost reducers are Urza's Incubator. Yep. Roan Ass's Monument. Yes, that makes... Uh, choose a creature type. The creatures cost two less. That's Urza's Incubator. Roan Ass Monument. Green creatures cost one less. Whenever you cast a creature spell, target creature you control gets plus two and tramp ski until end of turn. That's pretty good. We'll skip over one and come back to it. Emerald medallion cost, makes your green things cost one less. Sir. Sure. And monster manual. Hey, there we go. So this, hey, this has got another adventure. Zoologically? Zoological? Study. Green, two, sorcery, adventure, mill five cards. Ooh, now oh we're talking. Goodness. Yeah, there we go. Mill five cards. Return a creature milled this way from your G to your H. That's fine. That's Graveyard to hand. And also, Monster Manual's got green, one tap, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. That is the ultimate cost reduction. Yeah, that's like, um, that's like uh, Elvish Piper. Yes. Elvish P. Elvish PP. LVP. I think it even costs the same. Uh, No, Elvish Piper's just green. No, like to, to play, to put into play. Oh yes, I think it's four. yes. This is uh, this costs you one extra on the uh, on the activated ability over Elvish Piper because it also could potentially draw you a card. Yes, you could also um, if you didn't want to pay eleven dollars for this, eleven dollars for that. Yeah. Hey, um, you could do. Qu- is it Quicksilver Amulet? Yes, it is. Is the same effect? Is put a creature from your hand onto the battlefield? And I believe it also costs four. I think so. I think it does. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that would be a fair. So I think. I think there we're out of ways to make mana. There we have it. So we have 11, 14, 18 non-land cards all dedicated to making magics. So half the deck, essentially, is making mana. Wow. Okay. Let's not talk. I mean, elephant in the room. Huh? Get it? Yeah. The, the elephant cock in the room is worms, and there's lots of them, and, and they all cost lots. But let's figure out first how we're going to protect them and pump them even bigger or potentially find the ones that really are going to win us the game. Okay. That is the protection section, planeswalkers, we've got a pump section and a tutor section. Let's start with the protect section because it's what I'm looking at physically sure. on my screen right now. Sure. Start with Vigor. Ha, huh. Vigor. This is a six drop, six, six trampler. If damage would be dealt to creatures you control, you prevent it and put that many plus ones on it. And if Vigor would die, you shuffle it into its library. Goes to your graveyard from anywhere. So, so if even it gets if you milled or whatever. It, so you can't get it with your monster manual adventure. Correct. Int- cool uh, thing. Well, oh, you, no, you could. No, you, you could. could. You could, because the vigor trigger, vigor trigger? Vigor trigger. Will go on the stack, 
and it won't resolve until all of the block of text on zoological study you are correct resolves and then you could get vigor back and then it'll shuffle try your library to... anyway Ooh, yep. i like that Ma- okay. also vigor one of my favorite pictures in magic oh there you go it's a big half turtle half oxen with a bird on them yeah very cool Here's a card that probably nobody knows. Oh, bro. Catabatic wins. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, what did Brando, what, are you, what words are you saying? This 49 cent gem from <laughs> Visions is most likely available in a dark misprint Ooh. with a double black layer. It's an enchantment for green two with phasing. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, it's good already. Creatures with flying cannot attack, block, or use any ability that includes a tap. In their activation cost. Yeah. So it shuts down flyers. Sure does. That a little bit seems like a meta choice, but also worms don't fly. So here's the thing with, and I'm, I find this with my tan of the butt sewer deck. Yeah. The bane of my existence is that one big flying creature. Oh yeah. That yeah. just beats me. Yes. Right. So cards like this, and there's a few of them coming up and, and we'll, we'll talk about them obviously when we get there. These cards are important. Especially if you have a flying heavy meta, which we don't even really have, but it just takes one. It just takes one. Well, you know what? And I, and I hate, but I don't hate to keep going back to Sidewalk Slam episode two that's coming up is how many times did Alex flip off the top of his deck like a flying creature, yeah. right? And he was going to die, but he's just got like, oh, I'll block with my flyer. I'll block with my flyer. Yep. And that's like, man, if if somebody just had a catabatic wins... Because, yep. you know, it's totally a staple. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not phasing, not vanishing. Well, hey, let's, let's move on to the next card here because it's, well, the next few actually. Oh, yeah. Gravity Well is the next I one. I love this card. Whenever a creature with flying attacks, it loses flying <gasps> until end of turn. It's an enchantment for green, green one. Love it. <laughs> Dense Canopy. <laughs> that... It gives me very much um, 70s bush vibes. <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah, 70s Afro bush. Absolutely. Dense Canopy is an enchantment for green one. Creatures with flying can't block creatures without flying because the trees above them, too dense. Yes, yes. That gives me au naturel armpit vibes. Featured on this cards are the only true form of snakes, meaning they have four arms, two legs, and hair. And in the background, if you look, I think there's some worms. Dude, um... Man, those snakes probably got four hairy armpits instead of two. That's right. Gross. Yep. Next we have Death's Presence. Death's Presence is an enchantment for green five. Good thing we're making mana, hey? Yeah, buddy. Whenever a creature you control dies, put X plus one counters on target creature where X is the dead creature's power. Big. Yes. Makes- yeah, my 6-6 six, six worm, now 12-12. Twelve, twelve. Yes. Yes. And the last one is Bower Passage. Bowel passage. <laughs> yes. I, I, I after talking. Man, I freaking missed that and I I quit. You should quit magic forever. I think Don't I just might. quit the podcast. You have to sell all your magic cards and quit. <laughs> you will have an empty void in your life. So large. Henceforth oh, forever. Man. I'll have to collect Lego or something. God yes. Damn. Green one enchantment. Creatures with flying can't shit. <laughs> <laughs> they also can't block creatures that we control. Yes. I also like Raking Canopy in a deck like this. That does four damage to a flying creature when they attack. So when they attack, they die. Yes. Which is cool. But they can still block you. But Raking Canopy is also fun. Yeah, I forgot about that one. That's the Protec Sec. Sex. Sec? Uh, Sure. Let's do the pump section also. Because, you know, we totally need to pump our creatures. And we've got one uncategorized random sorcery that we'll read here too. Well, (laughs) let's put it in with the worms because that's what it does. Oh, okay. It makes worms. Yeah, you're right. uh, The pump spell is unnatural growth. It's an enchantment for quadruple green and one at the beginning of each combat. Double the power and toughness of each creature you control. That is each, each combat. Every single game I've ever played where this card was present. One of the four players, myself included, this happened to me once, I said, wait a second, that happens every single combat? Yeah. And then the, whoever played it's like, yeah, at everybody's combat, we're going to double my guys. No. Until end of turn. Yes. Until end of turn, that might be important for some people, but yes. That's more, <laughs> so the four, yes. four worms we're making with Baru are eight eights now. No, they're 12 twelves. Why are they 12 12? Because Barrow gives them plus two, oh, plus two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. At the beginning of each combat, double the power of, yep. Man, that yep. is a fair size creature. Yep. Here, let's, uh, let's, let's leap. Oh, man, can I talk? Let's no. read our one single 
Planeswalker. P Dubs. No, he's a card draw spell, so people lead us into card draw. Oh, look at you go. Okay. Yeah. So we got Planeswalker is Garrick Primal Hunter. He's a three loyalty Garrick for green, green, green two. First ability. Make a three three beast for plus one. That's that's a fine ability. We're not gonna undercut that. Correct. Minus three. Here's why we play him. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. That's a very good ability that puts this guy as one of the best Planeswalkers in my Planeswalker Cascade deck. He's really, really good. But wait, there's more. Not only is the next ultimate ability extremely powerful and will nearly always win you the game, short of Wrath of God, mm -hmm. but also thematic to this very deck. Minus six, create a 6-6 six, six green worm for each land you control. Ooh. Ooh so like 12 eight eights if we got our commander out? probably going to win you the game. Yes. Yeah. So that's very good. He's a very good Planeswalker. Leads us directly into the draw section. Bro, this guy with doubling season is like the most powerful. Oh, man. Because he's got three loyalty and yeah. minus six. So he comes in, you immediately minus six him to make, let's say, 10. But doubling season will actually make 20. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's, good. It's very, And then you, whenever you do that, and I have done that, Wrath of God every time. Oh, every yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Except, every time. Except for one time it, I didn't have that happen, and I just freaking won. <laughs> 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 just slapped. Oh, um, Alex Camgirl Tease Ortiz says this deck, like uh, like I just indicated, slaps lips in CCO Nation or CCO fashion yep. so hard that people's lips go spinning around and sagging down and they can kiss their own ass. <laughs> Just needed to throw that out there. Um, okay, here we go. First draw card. Soul's Majesty. Draw cards equal to the bigliness of your guy. Rishgar's Expertise. Draw cards equal to the bigliness of your guy. Play a five drop for free. Return of the Wild Speaker. Choose one. Draw cards equal to the bigliness of your guy. Or all non-human guys get plus three, plus three until end of turn. Praetor's Council. I should say, Guy in this case is your biggest creature. Yes. AKA your one eyed worm. Correct. Praetor's Council. This is an odd card draw spell. Green, 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 five. It's an eight drop. Kind of fallen out of favor. Hey? It has. You, you don't see this card very often no more. But uh, eight drop, return all cards from your graveyard to your hand, exile Praetor's Council. You have no max hand size. End of game. I like that card. Yeah, it's, it's yep. eight, eight, and you're probably going to draw eight. Probably. Is that, I mean, is that good? I think so. I mean, if you're going to, in a deck like this that makes so much mana, I think that you could probably play this as quickly slash as often as something like Restock, which gets two things back for five. Yeah. So why not get everything back for eight? Probably on the same turn. Probably on the same turn. And if you can cast more than one thing, maybe you'll do this and then get a Kadama's Reach that you can also cast, yeah. thereby ramping yourself even further. Correct. So, okay. it, It's a good card, and I like it in this deck. Lurking Predators. Lurky P. This card has killed me several times. I hate this card. Six drop enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, reveal the top card. Whenever they cast a spell? Yeah. I yep. do that every time. That's why it gets you. Whenever they yep. cast a spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put it on the bottom of your library. Man. Like, I'm just gonna get my. Uh, I'm just gonna get my seven drop, my ten drop. I'm just gonna get my eight drop. Yep. I'm just gonna get my world spine worm. That's a worm, yo. Yeah. I'm just gonna get my. What, what does it cost? Eleven. Yep. For free. For free. Why well, not? for five. Yeah. And wait a turn. But come on, if I cast two spells, you get two worms. I'm dead. Yeah. I could just be dead. Harmonize. No, oh, that's draw three. Caught it. Guardian project. Whenever a non-token creature ETBs, not cast ETBs. If it has a different name than something else, which it will, draw a card. Garrick's Uprising and Elemental Bond. And, and that's and, it. And sort of Beast Whisperer. Sure. You cast a creature, draw a card, really, and Guardian Project. They all kind of do the same thing. Yeah, and uh, Colossal Majesty is the last one. Colossi Madge. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control a creature with power four or greater, which we will draw a card. Yes. Yes. Our, our commander solves that for us, right? Sure does. Yep. So those are all the card draw cards. Let's do the tutors real quick. Sure. We have Tooth and Nail. Ooh. Okay. Seven drop tutor. Kind of fallen out of favor too. This used to be like the most powerful green card in the format. Like it was, it was circa 2009, right? Because you just search, search for your like two card combo and yep. that's that was Commander. Oh. Yeah. Before Rule Zero and before the social contract. I'm going to play Tooth and Nail and I have a CEDH deck now. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Seven drop, sorcery, search your library for two creatures, put them into your hand. But you could entwine it for two. Yep. And if you, uh, sorry, the other thing it does, take two creatures, put them from your hand onto the battlefield for free. Yeah. Those are the two things it does. You choose one of them. But if you pay two to entwine it, you do both. Both. Search for two creatures, put two creatures onto the battlefield. Yep. I remember one time way back in the day, the first time we met Lenny and Steven, oh, we yeah? were playing some CDH bros, me and Lenny. And I played Tooth and Nail with my sliver deck. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, what bad slivers are you going to get, Brandon? I'm like, well, I don't know. Crystalline sliver and muscle sliver. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got Zealous Constrips. Kiki Jiki won the game. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, a so bunch good. of freaking tools. Let me get away with shit like that. Speaking of searching for two creatures, putting them into play, we also have Defense of the Heart. Yes. Oh, and this is the old one from Legacy. I'm going to give it a read. During your upkeep, if you... if one of your opponents controls three or more creatures, sacrifice defense of the heart, search your library for two creatures, put those creatures into play, shuffle your library afterwards. It's a good one. It it does tooth and nail for less mana, but you got to like, air quotes, wait a turn to do it. Yes. Uh, and I guess people always say waiting a turn is like so bad and, and cards are do nothing if they make you wait a turn and blah, blah, blah. This card could potentially win you the game. Absolutely. As could. long as nobody has a disenchant. And in my experience, disenchant type effects are the least common kind of removal that people have like spot removal at instant speed of. Right. Right. The most common is creature and then maybe artifact. I would suggest that as well. And yes. then enchantment. Yep. Which should be the other way around. I think enchantments are getting way more out of hand. Than I think enchantments are. are probably more powerful. I mean, look at Defense of the Heart. Yeah. But artifacts are so much more commonplace, yeah. right? Like, you, you'll play any game and any player could have three or four artifacts. That's why. Because mana rocks and stuff, right? That's why Coxlad Extortionist is so strong. Yes. D Did you make that up? How Have I? Coxlide? That's what I said. Oh, <laughs> Welcome to the nation, baby. Forever, forever, he will be called that. <laughs> <laughs> one more thing about Defense of the Heart, though, before we move on. I would like to just say one thing about Defense of the Heart I really like is if you play it early in the game before your opponents have those three creatures necessary for it to go off, Yeah. sometimes it can buy you some time because they don't want to be oh. the first guy to get to the three creatures and nobody has a disenchant effect, so they're... Like, it kind of puts them in a holding pattern for a second and gives you a chance to, like, build up or do yeah, more stuff. Yeah, sometimes decks either just miss creatures on their draw step or don't pack a bunch of creatures. And and you might hold somebody off their commander for a turn because then you'll just immediately tutor for two cards that could win con you the game, right? Yeah, and I yeah, okay. that, that ain't nothing. I'm going to tell you, that ain't nothing. So that's everything but the worms. <laughs> so the worm shall now turn. We're going to start with that sorcery you mentioned earlier. It's okay. Called, it's worm quake. Worm cake. <laughs> Ooh, don't Google that. Do not Google oh, that. worm cake. Oh. Okay, sorcery for green, green, four. And it's got corrupted, right? Yes. Corrupted? Corrugated? That's Sh corrupted. Conjugated? Okay. Create an XX green Phyrexian worm creature token with Tramsky and Toxic 1, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast this spell. Then for each opponent with three or more poison counters, you create another of those tokens. You're going to make one of them probably the first time. Yeah, so they've got... The, you're going to make a 6-6, six, six, which is actually an 8-8 eight, eight with Toxic 1. Yep. Good it example. has flashback for green, green, 8... So you're going to make an 8-8, eight, eight, which is potentially a 10-10. No, you're going to make a 10-10. Ten, ten, it'll be a 12-12. Oh, yes. Yeah, I said that wrong. Yeah. A 10-10. Ten, ten, it's actually a 12-12 12, 12, if you have your commander. Yes. It's pretty good. With trample and... So, but the odds are like, when you hit somebody with this, they're taking probably six. Sure. Right? Toxic one. Who you, cares? Yeah. Right? Who gives a shit? This, you're, you're making an 8-8 eight, eight and a... 12 12 out of this thing that's what you're getting. yeah you don't care about the infect you're just you're just pounding them pounding them with your giant one-eyed worm <laughs> just pound them flat <laughs> oh yeah i want your opponent to look like a pizza with like a big roman helmet stamp in it <laughs> yes <laughs> all right worm weaver coil oh yeah art gonna, looks like totem armor i'm just gonna throw that out we're there. gonna coil it around them 
Enchant green creature. This is an enchant creature for a first creature. Sure. Yep. Enchanted creature gets plus six, plus six. It makes it into a worm. And you can go green, 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 sacrifice worm weaver coil, create a six, six green worm creature token. Sure. <sighs> Speaking of coiling, we have a worm coil engine. Oh, yeah. Six, six, death touch, lifelink. When it dies, you get a three, three, and a three, three with death touch or lifelink. World spine worm. We talked about this earlier. Oh, yeah. Like magic's biggest creature? Is it still? Is Emrakul bigger? No, Emrakul is the same. Well, this one's a 15-15 trampler that when it dies, you get three 5-5 five, five tramplers. Uh, do the 5-5s five trample? Yes, they, they do. do. And when it dies, you or put into the graveyard from anywhere, you shuffle it into its owner's library. That's cool. Man, that's a big-ass creature. So it's a 17-17 that makes three seven sevens when it dies. Yeah. With our commander. That's pretty good. Oh. Ooh. Sandworm Convergence. I like oh, this one, too. Yeah, yeah, this is one of the ones that people play outside of worm decks, right? Yep. Okay, so this is an enchantment for eight. Green, green, six. Creatures with flying can't attack you or planeswalkers you control, so it's got some protection of the variety that we're already playing. And at the beginning of your end step, end step, so you don't mm -hmm. have to wait for it, really, create a 5-5 five, five green worm creature toke. Flavorfully, that card doesn't make any sense to me, but... Because the sandworms, if you've ever watched Beetlejuice... Or Tremors. Do you know where they live? No. Under the ground. Why does that stop flying things? Because they jump up unsurprisingly. But they would get the things on the ground first. Maybe. Things on the ground, but they there's, would more easily get. There's no, there's nothing on the ground, though. There's... Uh, we are on they, the ground. No, they live in the desert because they're sandworms. I don't know, man. And they don't get other worms because they're bros. All right. Maybe in this deck it makes sense. What is happening in this picture? I don't know, but I like this shitty card. <laughs> Jesus, root breaker worm. 6-6 six, six, trample for seven. All flavor text. <laughs> <laughs> Roar of the worm. Roar of the worm. This used to be a card in standard uh, in 2001. <laughs> Green, six, sorcery. Create a 6-6. Six, six. Also flashback for four. For four. That's pretty good because you would actually just mill it or get it into your graveyard somehow and then get a 6-6 six, six for four. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Predatory Worm. Ooh, uh, Drives a black van. Yeah, free candy spray painted on the side. Yeah. Vigilance, 4-4 four, four for four. Gets plus two, plus two as long as you control the Garrick planes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so oh, the, there is so a, there's a non zero percent chance that that could happen. We do have a Garrick. That's an eight eight for four if we control Garrick and our commander. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Plated slag worm. So that's your mother worm slag. Eight oh. eight. This is from Mirrodin. This is a good card too. Eight eight for seven. Can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. AKA it got hexproof. Yes. Sure. Yes, it does. Penumbra Worm. I played this in my Penumbra deck when it came out in Apocalypse. Ooh. Man, this is like a walk down history lane with your good friend Ryan. 6-6 <laughs> six, six, Trampler for 7. When it dies, you put a 6-6 six, six Black Worm Creature Token with free candy painted on the side. Neat. Yes. Palaka Worm. Palaka Worm. OG from World Wake. I lost to this in a PTQ. I played second in the PTQ because my goddamn opponent hit Palaka Worm. Was it limited? Not standard. Palaka Worm and standard, baby. Yeah. Okay, 7-7 seven, seven, Trampski Worm for seven. When it ETBs, gain seven life. When it dies, draw a card. I really appreciate you thinking that I could make a second in a tournament that was, that was draft. Well, Palaka Worm was like the that. best card no, it wasn't because it was too aggro for Palaka Worm. If yeah. you could survive to seven mana, then gain seven life, Palaka Worm just won you the game. You didn't even need to attack with it yeah. because you have seven more life. And now, like Vampire Nighthawk or a Geyser Glider, like the yep. Landfall Gains Flying, doesn't win you the game anymore. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Zendikar Limited. Pan Glacial Worm. Pan Glacial Worm. This this is a weird one. Hey, I From like this one. Cold Snap. Yeah. Nine five. Kind of like Yargle, hey? Yep. How come we have Yargle Day but not Panglacial Worm Day? Because he's not a he's not as big of a meme. If this was a frog, we'd have Panglacial Frog Day. Okay, Panglacial Worm Day is a 9-5 worm for 7 trample. When you're searching your library, you may play Panglacial Worm from your library. 
So when you're searching with your tooth and nail, or more likely with your defense of the heart. Yes. Or with a terramorphic expanse or something. Oh, well, defense of the heart, because it triggers during your upkeep, you'll yeah. have all your mana open still. Yeah. And, oh, can you play plan glacial worm during your upkeep, though? You can't. Oh, no, you Timing can. restrictions, right? But if yeah. you go, like, it's turn 86, because that's what this deck wants to play till, and you top deck, like, your Sylvan Scry, and you're like, oh, fuck. Pan oh, glacial we worm time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going for it. Yeah, yeah. It's a good little... um Safety. It's it's like uh can we call it condom worm? Yes, we yep. can. Yes, we okay. absolutely can. Okay. Impervious great worm. Impervious. Um also condom? Because it's impervious? What in the goddamn hell? This is a 16 16 for 10 with convoke, so it can cost less, and it's indestructible. This is magic's biggest creature. What the goddamn <laughs> hell? You've never seen this card? No! <laughs> What the hell is this? 16, 16 for 10. Ooh, double nasty. Man, yeah. there was a time when like 12 12s for 14, you had to sacrifice goddamn land to untap them. 16, 16, indestructible for 10. Fuck off. Or for zero. Yeah, or for nothing. Oh man, I want to play this card against you so bad now. <laughs> It doesn't even have... Tra How does this not have Trample? I guess because it would just win you the game yeah, in, in Limited, hey? Yes. Greater Sandworm. Greater Sand... Are we playing the Lesser Sandworm? No. <laughs> Is there a Lesser Sandworm? Probably not. Okay. Greater Sandworm can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less, and it cycles for two. It's a 7-7 seven, seven for seven. Engulfing Slagworm. <laughs> uh, also Brando's mother. 7-7 no. seven, seven for seven. When it blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, destroy that creature, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. It's insane. Yeah, it's got like reverse life link. Yeah. It's a worm. It has life dink. So if you gave this thing a lure and yes. you attacked, you would annihilate your opponent's entire board, yes. not lose your creature, and gain a bunch of life. Uh, well, you might lose your creature. Well, no, nah, because it's when it becomes blocked. Oh. So it's before damage. Yeah, the oh. creatures just eat shit. It's a. It's basically a basilisk. I like that. Yeah, that's that's some yeah. shit. Elder scale worm. Elder scale worm. This is Uncle Brando. The elder part that is. Mm. Seven seven trampler for seven. I'm seeing a trend here. Uh, me as well. Yeah, demons are six six for six. Worm seven seven for seven. When it enters the battlefield, if your life total is less than seven, it becomes seven. That's powerful magic. Yeah, man. As long as you have seven or more life, damage that would reduce your life total to less than seven reduces it to seven instead. That's pretty cool. Oh. That's an interesting Yeah, that's card. a weird one, eh? Man, these things do all kinds of crazy yeah. shit. And then we have... <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> this dirt cowl worm? Dirt cowl worm. <laughs> Bro needs to have a shower. It looks like a dragon with no arms, legs, or wings. That's literally what worms are, aren't it's they? It's just a head with a tail sticking out of it. Oh, no, that's Wyrm. Yeah, with a Y. Yeah, yeah. This is just a big, nasty, dirty fucking worm. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever an opponent plays a land, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Neat. Fuck. Defiler of Vigor. This is a fucking worm. Can I just can I just say that I think that Dirt Cowl Worm was the Tempest pre-release promo card. <laughs> 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 no, or it was some kind of promo with a date stamp. I remember that being a thing. Oh, if man. we're continuing the trend of going back in time through the history of worms. And why wouldn't we? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Defiler of Vigor, right? This is the Payphyrexian green for um, for a green pip in yep. spells you cast, right? So this yep. is kind of a ramp spell at the cost of life. But also, whenever you cast a green permanent spell, put a plus one counter on each creature you control. <laughs> each creature we control. If and you want to see this card in action and the managing of dice that it takes to actually work this card, frick. Sidewalk Slam Season 2, Episode 2. There we go. It makes an appearance too. Uncle Brando is a good uncle and is managing the dice for one of our opponents because <laughs> there is a lot going on for a minute. Oh, oh man, to file the review. That, it, and all of that comes on a 6-6 six, six body with trample for five. Yes. Like, what the f Yes. God damn it. Power creep doesn't exist. Crush of worms. Put three 6-6 six, six green worm creech toke into play. Flashback. Oh, it costs nine. Yeah. You're getting... You're getting 18 power for nine. 
pretty good. You're getting potentially 24 power for nine if you got your commander. Flashback for 11. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah. Can and, you? Can and you? It's 12. Oh, yeah. It's 12. I, yeah, I, I mathed good. Yep. Can you imagine doing this and then flashing it back, same turn, getting six bros? Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, yeah. Six eight eights, just crushing. That's like Garrick who? Yeah. Yeah. Man, cool. look at the art on this card. That is cool. Well, in a bleak sort of way. So I, I've read this card before, but real close out of the corner of my eye when we've moused over it, I thought it was called Sausage Worm. Uh, sausage Worm. It's sausage a, worm. It's a six six for six and a green. Has butt thirst three and trample. I don't know what blood thirst does. If they I were do. if they were dealt damage, for, it enters the battlefield with three plus one counters. Right. That's right. Got there. Yes. If an opponent. Yeah. So I think if you hit all three of your opponents, does it get nine? Is that how that works? Or do you hit one opponent? If an opponent was dealt damage this turn, so you get one. Uh, you get one instance of three, I should say. Correct. Okay. Yes. Regardless of how many opponents were dealt damage. This was in M12, where Bloodthirst made a comeback from uh, dis- Dissension, I think, yep. specifically, right? Yep. And it was put in there because it was an intro set to teach new players cast spells on your second main phase after you attack, because mm-hmm. your creature will become a 9-9 for 7. Guild Pact. Gruel was in Guild Pact. The second, the second one. Yes, I knew it was the second one. Um, Dissension is the third. One. Dissension is the third one. Yeah. Bellowing Tangle Worm is our last card. Oh, BT, Bellowing Tangle Worm. Four, four for five with Intimidate, which means it can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and creatures that share a color with it. So green, and also other green creatures you control have Intimidate. That's pretty good. That gives all your worms kind of unblockable. And quasi-unblockable. Although lots of green creatures going to show up at a commander table, but still, yours are bigger than theirs. So yeah. so there it is. And yeah. that's the deck. Man. Okay. I've been waiting all day. Strengths and weaknesses. Strengths and weaknesses. Where do you want to start? Well, we usually start with the strengths. Sure. Beats. Beats. Be- Yes, this deck with a Z. Yes, it will. It will beats by Dre. You. It will actually slap the lips clean off of somebody's face onto somebody else's face. Yes, and, but not <laughs> remove their lips though. Like it will knock the lips off of somebody else's face. Those lips will land on the will land in the sand where you will stomp them into the dirt. Yes, and then the other player will have no lips. Yes, you'll thwomp them with your giant worm into the dirt. Yes, it'll slap somebody's face so hard their lips will go flying off and land on somebody else's face with such a hard slap of the face that those. Those lips will fly off. Exactly. <laughs> Precisely. Yes. Okay. So funny to tell somebody about it. Come on. Yes. It's almost meme deck. This this is a meme you deck. You think it's a meme this deck? This is an absolute meme deck. It's not like your mono green stompy deck? No. It, well, I mean, it also is. It, it, it you, is you, also You that, can do both. But it is certainly a meme deck. The jokes and the lulls. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling that into one, right? They're all real, yes. Okay, real strength. Real strength. Actually plays... What is probably the most powerful cards at the EDH table in not only the green card draw spells and and the Garricks and the Silvalas and stuff, but also like fifteen and sixteen sixteens. Yes, like it, those are just going to be the biggest creatures in the game. This is one of those decks that kind of adopts the Brando deck building philosophy, where it just if you draw a card and it's really good, that's what every one of your cards is. Yes, you don't play a lot of utility stuff except for Harmonize, which you should cut immediately. And put in either an Acroma's Memorial to give you guys haste or a Concordant Crossroads to give you guys haste. Ooh, those are good cards. Mm-hmm. Good cards. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Last strength, and we're going to come back to it, but you could build this for quite a a good, low, nice, clean budget. Yes. Some of the worms are worth more than you'd think, but if you're not buying them from a store and are instead trading them from a friend, they are cards that, if you have good friends, they will trade you for less because you're actually going to play your Panglacial Worm. Yeah. Or your Impervious Great Worm. Or like They're not worth five bucks. They're, they're just Yeah, not. exactly. So let's move over to the weaknesses real quick. Slower than balls in January. That's the saying, right? Molasses in January. Oh, I thought it was balls. Yes. Uh, here's, this is, I don't know if you have this on your list of weaknesses, but the first thing I think of when I look at a deck like this is it could run into the which half of the deck do you draw? Probably. Oh, yeah. You could draw all ramp and have mana for days and nothing to do with it, even with your commander, or 
you're going to draw all these nine nines and you'll never play them. That's how my Bryon Stone Arm deck works, right? Exactly. I draw like all the, the ramp and the mana rocks and the land taxes and no guys to fling. Yep. Same like this. You could just draw, you know, you, you think, oh man, I've got three land and maybe one creature and three ramp spells in my opener. Yep. Perfect. All I need to draw is any creature and it's gas. Yep. And you just draw like on turn three. It's like, okay, here we go. You rip it and it's like land. cultivate. Yep. Forest. Those are like your turn three and turn four draws. And you're like, I'm fucked. Because somebody used a removal spell on your 6-6. Six, six, or it got caught up in the first sweeper because somebody's playing tokens. Yep. And then you're like, uh-oh. And you draw, I don't know, your unnatural growth, which is a fine card. And a beast whisperer, which is a fine card. And it's turn eight now. And you've got nothing. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. So. And a lot of the draw spells, sans harmonize, which I still say you caught are dependent on you having one of your big dudes. Yes. So yes, you can refill your hand if your deck is working. If it's not, drawing a Rishkar's expertise in some cases will draw you three cards. Yeah, so which half of your deck do you draw is, is now on there. I will I will put in there how much early game does the deck have against aggro decks. None. Like think of the O O Hair Axonil deck. You could be dead by turn four or five when this deck plays its first creature. Yeah. Right? So... Uh, does very much relegate it to the realm of casual, which we knew no because yep, it's kind, wrong with that. kind of a meme deck. Yep. But you have to make sure that when you sit down, you say, hey, I'm playing 16 16s, but it's going to take me like 16 turns yeah, to play them. <laughs> I was going to say nine or 10 turns at least for the deck to like really start snowballing. Yeah. So just still, be aware, right? Yeah, like, oh, well, you can play a 16 16 on turn five or six. Yeah, but it's only one creature. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like one giant creature turn five or six. In an EDH game, it does not the difference make necessarily. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so the deck as it is, moving to the budgie section. As is, as on Archideck.com worms, 355 bucks. That's perfectly fine. That's fine. Because you're gonna have fine. a lot of these cards. But hear me out. Hear me out. Let's say you don't have a don't have one or have the sixty dollar budget for a great hinge, most expensive card in the deck. Yep. Cut it. Because you've got ramp, you've got card draw, and if you don't have creatures, Great Henge costs eight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you're not casting it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. Now, this would maybe give us the ability, if we cut it at uh, $32, yep. it would also leave us room to cut the Sylvan Scrying as well. Yeah. And if we're cutting the Sylvan Scrying and, and, and really moving away from the non-basic land mana production we could maybe also cut yavamaya cradle of growth because we only have nearly exclusively forests anyways yeah there's one two three four five there's yeah. six non-forests of the 35 reliquary land. tower and rogues passage might be really good cards to find with sylvan scrying but maybe not yeah we're not. and if it could save us at this point like if you cut the nykthos and the yavamaya and the Sylvan Scrying, we're saving like over $50. Yeah. Right? And my final cut, because it's $35 again? What? It just got reprinted, sort of. Urza's Incubator. Jesus. No shit, eh? No shit. And great ramp spell in creature decks. Hell yeah. And good card, but it doesn't really do anything except provide you mana. Yeah. And you could have something else like a mana rock with an extra function you could cut it and keep your nyx bloom ancient and play that thing of vigor oh uh, the other uh, mana uh, virtue triplet. of green triple because then you that's fine yeah because then you get the po the possible situation of nyx bloom ancient and that and then your swamps tap for what nine forests Forest. Tap for nine. Ooh, that's lots. Yeah, so that's that's several magics. That's a impervious great worm, almost. War, yeah, and you tap your commander instead of making a 4-4, four, four, you make a 16-16. Sixteen, sixteen. Yeah. You there you go. Because <laughs> convoke, right? Yeah. That's pretty dang good. There we go. So, Great Henge, Nykthos, Incubator, Cradle, cut them. That's 140 in savings. You could build this deck. For 200 bucks. 215 bucks, plus or minus what you already own. Mm -hmm. And... Probably. Which is what every binder built deck you ever build <laughs> yes. will cost you. Yes. Now, I will say, I will say there are a lot of random $6 to $12 cards in here. Yeah. 
that you don't know are actually six to twelve dollars, right? Like there are there is some worms just cost money. Yeah. And things like Zendikar Resurgent, even though it's been in recent pre-cons, it's still three or four bucks. And Lurking Predators, still like eight bucks. It's nine dollars, yeah. Yeah, Tooth and Nail, just just money. Yeah, also reprinted, still five bucks. Yeah. So, anyways, that's the deck. I wanted to do a spice calculator because the average CMC is so high, but we're running tutors, and really there's only one way to win. And really, with, with Beru Worm jerker offer yeah you're gonna see the worm deck so yeah. the spice calculator is going to be a little bit low yeah so instead of that i would offer people the opportunity to go and use the spice calculator for free on commandercoco.com there's a tab for it and pick up some spice calculator stickers while you're there oh yes then you can mark all your deck spice rating or use them as labels for your deck boxes because they fit on there perfectly i Very will add well. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah and it'll let everybody know that your decks are spicy the challenge that i had yes so in episode 408, okay. I called out CCO Nation and said, maybe we'll do the deck, the first deck of the year, our highest possible mana value, biggest average converted mana cost deck we've ever done. That's fully playable. And functional. Yes. yes. It has to be functional. And this one, I think we've demonstrated, very much is. It's five or something, right? 5.11 average mana value for this deck. It's pretty good. I would like to challenge... CCO Nation to give us a deck with a higher average mana value. Yes. Higher than this one, still functional. And if you can either crunch some numbers or demonstrate how or why the deck you submit is the highest possible converted mana cost that one could make for a deck, I think that we got some uh, we got some extra prizes left over from 2023 that I've mm. I, I've got for people. Okay, I've got some. Uh, our good friends at Ultimate Guard sent us some new stuff, and I've got maybe some secret layers. I got a bunch of CCO merch, which you could get at at CommanderCoco.com as well. You know, toques mm -hmm. and sweaters and new yeah. T-shirts and stuff. Yeah. Freaking buy it, okay? <laughs> I got some prizes for what could be the highest CMC deck. Ever and I want to challenge CCO Nation to to submit that to us. And we're going to give you a couple of weeks to do that because yep. your boy Uncle Brando needs your help. Oh, I am embarking on a journey to teach somebody who's never played Magic before how to play Magic. Oh, uh -huh. and I have built them a deck that is cutesy, uh -huh. accessible, oh, uh -huh. actually good. Oh, yeah, right. And I think contains. Every evergreen keyword ever printed into the game. So this is an accessible deck. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So what I'm looking for, I'm playing Naya, and next week we'll talk about the deck. Okay. Talk about the deck next week to give you guys a couple of weeks to come up with your high CMC monstrosities. In the meantime, I am looking for strategies to actually teach somebody the game Ooh, using a deck. There we go. What's your favorite strategy for inducting a new human being who just... I want to learn how to play magic. Can you teach me? Where do you start? What's something that you save till the end? Is there like a, a through line that you want to make sure you're ingraining early on to make sure that the habits are there? Right? Yeah, Always, yeah, yeah. Right? There's, there's stuff when you're teaching sports, and Ryan knows about that. When you're teaching somebody something, you want to subtly make sure that they're always paying attention to X. What is it? Yes. Okay, I'll add a caveat to that. Or um, a, a rider text un underneath. Yeah. Asterisk, and then you read the bottom of the page, right? Right. Okay. For the deck that we're asking, the high CMC deck, yep. or Brando's um, ingrained teaching technique mm -hmm. question or episode that we're going to do next week, yep. you can submit them, commandercookout at gmail.com. Correct. It's a fine place to put them. Yep. If you're in the Discord, one of the benefits of becoming a patron supporter, yes, sir. links in the show notes, wherever you find the show, you can put them in the preferred deck list category okay. or, or thread if you have access to that that's one of the higher tier benefits yep you could put them in the casual deck thread you could put them there mm -hmm. or you could put them in the creative team thread if you have access to that thread mm -hmm. so all different tiers have all different accesses and put them in any of those four places mm -hmm. and we'll find them tag me if you're gonna if you want me to see it because that's yes. how i find things yes yes tag brando in the teaching players how to do yes. one and 
put the decks in the appropriate deck list channels or commandercoco.com. Yes. One more thing, and I'll, I'll answer your question with a question. Uh-oh. Is how old is the person? Same age as me. Same, okay. Uh, so an adult. Yes. And it's an adult person. An adult person. Now, for people who are submitting answers, it could be anybody. Maybe yes. like there's definitely a different strategy when teaching kids things, yes. literally anything. Yes. Then there is an adult, but some things like your deck has lots of evergreen. Yeah. Some teaching techniques, especially for magic are evergreen, like the phases of a turn. Correct. And, and when to draw your card and when you can cast instance versus sorceries, those are things that they need to know. Yes. Right. Um, but if somebody has an articulate answer, that's. Or an articulate enough answer to give us the evergreen stuff plus what you'd specifically do for an adult. I think that that would be even better of an answer. Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. So thank you in advance for all of your responses to that question. Thank you to Pile of Bones for giving us beer while we play Sidewalk Slam. Ooh. And thank you to FusionGamingOnline.com where you can go to get all of your gaming supplies for 5% off using CCO Summer special promo code. All your giant, huge, one-eyed worms. And if you want to mushroom stamp somebody, they are the best place to go, baby. Yes. If you want to mushroom stamp Uncle Brando with an Atokthon worm in Chicago, I will visit. Video it. Oh man, that'd be give them the Roman Atokthon helmet. But you have to hit me with the worm for it to count, and I don't think that's ever happened to me. Oh yeah, and I'm throwing it out there into the world. It's a oh. challenge, if you will. So oh, three challenges. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on, <laughs> bitches! <All right. laughs> and on that note, we are going to be back to teach somebody how to play magic on a very exciting episode of Commander <laughs> Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song! Ooh.